Marco, great to have you back. And today the subject of our demonstration is reticulation. Do you want to uh, define what reticulation is for everybody? Yes, Peter, thank you. Um, reticulation is a surface treatment. Uh, it literally um, gives us a lovely, lovely texture, a texture that we probably wouldn't be able to achieve in any other way. Um, for for what for making jewelry, it's very important to find, I guess, your your style, your what is going to make you different, your point of difference. Because obviously, there's billions of pieces of jewelry in the world. There's tons of us creatives working in uh, different materials, but we need to find something that um, makes us and our work different to others, uh, not only to be able to sell it, but also to be able to have a voice in you know this crazy world that we live in today. And giving your pieces texture will set you apart from a lot of the commercial pieces that are being sold out there. This is reticulation. It is the effect, the effect that happens to metal when we heat it up in different layers or we, we deal with it by its composition. So uh, the first thing that we need to know is that uh, it's it's all about those ridges and valleys, right? It, it's creating these beautiful landscapes within, within your piece. We are working today with a piece of 0 0.8 sterling silver sheet. Everyone's got it. Everyone knows what this is. Um, you might have a thicker one. I don't think that you would be able to do this technique with something too thin. I wouldn't suggest going any thinner than, for example, 0 0.5, because it will happen way too fast. What we're trying to do is we're trying to stagger and layer our sterling silver uh, by its components. So obviously we know that sterling silver is 92 92.5% pure silver and 7.5% is copper. So what we're trying to do is treat this piece of silver by um, somehow separating, manipulating these layers within inside this little piece so that they react in different ways. Uh, some of you might have experienced Accidental reticulation <laughs> is a very common thing. Accidental reticulation is basically melting your metal. It happens to all of us, specifically when we are uh, beginning our careers, that we overheat a piece of sterling silver and it crumbles. It just crumples and it makes these lovely, lovely textures. And then people say to me, oh, I've melted it or, you know, I've buggered it. I can't keep working with it. And I say to them, you've just done uh, intentional reticulation of the first layer. And they just, you know, feel better about it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if it happened, if it's happened to you before, <clears throat> good on you, experience is everything in this trade. Um, but my, the way that I'm going to show you guys how to do it today, you might um understand it might help you to understand why your pieces were melting too fast or too slow or why was there differences within a, one specific piece of metal why were the differences in color or why were there differences in temperature thus in surface treatment that's what we're going to talk about today beautiful sounds exciting so, so where are we that starting piece there, yes the bit that piece there with all the ridges and the peaks and valleys started yeah. off like this. Yes, the, so the one on your left is very boring. Yeah, and everyone, you know, you can buy pieces of silver like this, you can make them yourself, roll them yourself, and they are nothing but a shiny uh, leveled surface. If you want to, and, and you can make, for example, a bangle or a ring or a pair of earrings out of it, which is fine. But if you want to achieve lovely, serendipitous, magical surfaces within your work, 
this is a really good technique to try. Okay, what's our first step then, Marco? What we're going to do in a nutshell, we're going to try to bring forth it within the sterling silver, we're going to try to bring forth copper oxide. So bring it up to the surface so that the first layer of the metal is copper oxide and the second layer becomes pure uh, silver. And what, what that's going to have, what that's going to cause is a difference in melting temperatures. And that's what, when it cools down, it just quenches and cools down fast and it creates those lovely textures. Um, the reticulated effect is a result of the different cooling rates, right? So uh, contrary to what we think, it's not all about the melting. It's actually all about the cooling. When it cools down, the two strata within the layers of the silver cool down at a different level, at a different temperature and a different time, and they start doing those lovely, lovely reactions. Um, we are going to take the metal to an oxidized state. And you can see in this piece that's quite clear how the copper is coming through. It's almost a little bit pink. Mm. It's the copper coming through to the first layer. So it started like this, cut some pieces, similar pieces, and now the steps to follow, they are, it's a process, it's a long process. This is not an easy, fast way. This is a very slow paced, repetitive um, strategy that I'm going to show you guys. But obviously I worked on this before. I prepared these pieces before um, the live so that we didn't have to do them so many times. The metal needs to be heated up to 650 degrees Celsius. This is sterling silver. You're going to have to adjust your temperatures depending on the size of the piece of silver that you're working and depending on the metal that you're working, if it's got less copper or more copper. This is sterling silver, and we're going to heat it up to 650 degrees, seven to ten times. Ooh. So if you do it seven to ten times, seven for the smaller pieces, ten for the bigger pieces, and if your piece is that big and maybe that thick, you might want to do this 15 times. Well, what I'm going to show you is my little setup that I've got today, which is ideal for slow processes like this. Um, behind me, <clears throat> my orca torch is... Uh, standing on a little pedestal in a little holder and I've got the tripod um, with a mesh and my piece of silver in the middle. We change to this camera, I can show you. I've got that right there in the middle. This is the piece of silver that I've been working on together with this one. And the third one is here, the reticulated, already reticulated one. So what I do, well, it slow and continuous temperature. The way that we're going to make this metal change and sing for us is if we treat it very, very slowly and very gently. I've got my pickle pot with a very strong um, concentration today. It's very hot and very strong. It's ready to go. I've got my quenching water to neutralize the pickle. My copper tongs to go in the pickle only. And my steel tongs to be holding the metal when it's hot. Let's turn the torch on and see what one of the things that I love doing is keeping a little count of the amount of times that I put the metal in the pickle. It's got to be, remember, anywhere from six, sorry, so from seven to ten times, depending on the size. So to get this one here, I did it ten times. This one here has only got five times, the one that's all oxidized, which I'm going to use as an example. And this one here 
is it's got what like seven or eight times I can't even remember but it's just ready to be reticulated so I'm gonna turn my torch on and the, the reason why I do this setup and I don't uh, heat them up from the top just holding the torch in my hand is because uh, I repeat this this technique is all about very slow steady temperature so we're looking at achieving 650 degrees Celsius which basically is dull red we're not looking for a very very strong temperature we're not trying to melt it it's annealing temperature so a dull red at 650 degrees and you will see that the metal will start oxidizing it'll start going darker and change color right in front of us uh, sure i'll move the camera just a little bit to the side we can see it better it's starting to go quite dark this is like a little chilean barbecue <laughs> <See that? laughs> look the heat is coming from below and it's heating up my pieces just where I need them. This is giving me steady and, oh, is that better? Steady and slow temperature. That's better. So not, not too red. Don't go too red, you guys, because it will start melting your piece and it might um, stick to the mesh, which you don't want add a little bit more temperature and you can see that the area of heat is about five centimeter radius right in the center so that's where I keep the pieces and I wait for a, around three to five minutes so maintain 650 degrees for anywhere in between five sorry three to five minutes so everyone that um, has dealt with sterling silver before knows that at any minute you exceed that temperature and it will start melting. Ideally, we don't melt it. We just heat it up gently for a prolonged period of time, promoting that oxidization so we can bring all those copper oxides to the first layer. Uh, I just flipped it over, but that's just because I like to. <laughs> I don't really have to. I'll be honest with you. The temperature is, is really, really good, and it's heating up evenly. Uh, it's now starting to go a little bit dull red. The light from <coughs> in the studio, you can't see much. It's almost like daylight in here. But if it were dark, you would be able to see that these pieces are now dull red. So, has it been three minutes? Uh, Maybe. <laughs> pretty close. So, Marker, I just looked up the melting point of uh, silver, which people probably know. It's 961 degrees C. Correct. Yeah. So, we're not getting there. We don't want to get too high in temperature. We want to keep it really nice, low and steady. So, that has already had three minutes in the center of the flame. I'm going to relocate the big piece to the center of the flame and this little square here has already cooled down a little bit and I'm going to throw it in the pickle. There it goes and it quenches. I'm going to bring my phone so everyone can see it's in the pickle pot. Come back to the torch. Hope that that is visible. So that needs to stay in the pickle for a couple of minutes, I guess. Um, just and like normal. The pickling process does what, Marco? It just replenishes, it cleans the surface. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to promote oxidization and then get rid of it. Okay. So this is getting rid of the oxidization that we've just um, achieved in the fire. And as I'm just going to pull this out now, if I could catch it, 
<laughs> You're using the wrong bait. <laughs> giving it a little rinse in cold water. Pat dry, very important to pat dry. And how long and till you put it back on the heat again? Well, have a look first. It's yeah. quite clean, isn't it? It doesn't have a lot of oxidization anymore. So mm. I am achieving what I want it to achieve, which is a really nice, clean, sterling, I mean, pure silver surface. And the next step that is always important is repeat is this here. I'm not sure if I can get, yeah, I think this is better. With the help of a wire brush, any wire brush that you may have, we're going to scratch the surface. Just scratch the surface of your piece of silver. This is going to help promote that layering, that lovely, lovely effect. Give it a really good scratch on both sides. And remember, repeat this seven to ten times. Once we scratch it really well, all of the surface, front and back, because you don't know which side you're going to be using in the end. I'm going to Boom, oh, okay. Phone. Not in the pickle, <laughs> I hope. We're back. Phew. Woo. There we are. Once we've scratched the surface, we can put it back on the fire. And this little guy here that has already been there for a while, I'm going to let it cool down. It's important that you don't quench your pieces too hot. Let it rest for a second. Once it's lost its redness, you are ready to throw it into the pickle bath to quench. Quench directly into your pickle bath. Don't quench in water before. We're trying to achieve a specific effect, right? We're not just annealing like normal. So this guy is still warming up. Uh, whilst this uh, warms up to 650, I can take my larger piece out of the pickle, rinse it in cold water. So now for this one, according to my notes, it would be the ninth time that I quench it. So one more time to quench this and we are ready for reticulation. I am going to put it back into, oh, I didn't scratch it. Oh, skipping a step. Uh oh. Metal brush, any metal brush will do. And give it a really good scratch. Remember, we're trying to bring forward Copper oxides. Right, very well scratched. Place it back into our Chilean barbecue setup. <laughs> Asalo, how we call it. And you can see the oxidization here in the other piece that was still in the fire. That's what you want. You want it to go dark gray. And then one, once it's spent three minutes, three to five minutes, at 650, we are ready to quench it one more time. And I think that, that for that little one, this is the last time. And for this big one, we will make it the last time and then we go straight to reticulation. What do you think about that, Peter? Sounds exciting. We're almost ready. When I, d I have to admit that when I do this technique, especially if I'm teaching it or if I'm doing it uh, for a client, I time it in my, my um, you know, in my phone or I'm using a timer or a clock. Otherwise, you need to be precise. It's important to be as precise as possible so you get a really good result. Yeah, because you've worked out a result you want to get using a, doing a certain process. If you vary from that, you may not get that result. Correct. This is hmm. one of those techniques. Admittedly, in silversmithing, there's a lot of um, room for error or, you know, a little room for luck. 
in this technique, the neater and more, um, the more you follow the process, the process, you will get to a better result. That's all I can say. So, so Naka, okay, just, uh, sorry, just to interrupt. I'll just ask uh, viewers if they've got any questions or comments, Absolutely, please. Peter. Please let us know in the comments. A little bit of oxidization on the first layer, which is quite dark. Straight into the pickle for cleaning. And recenter the big um, piece of silver. Any questions, please, by all means. I'm waiting for this piece to warm up, reach top temperature. Remember our top temperature is only 650 degrees. We can't melt it. We can't take it any higher than that. In the meantime, I'm going to grab the little piece of silver, which is now ready for reticulation. Nice and white. The surface is clean. It's a beautiful white piece, isn't it? Lots of um, lots of people, lots of my students really like that effect of the replenished silver, where the first layer becomes totally white. But the truth is, the minute you touch it with a tool, it'll start burnishing and shining. So it's not permanent. Okay. So there we go. Last time for this piece of silver in the barbecue. <laughs> so, Marco, with the temperature, you've just learned via experience that uh, to get that uh, gauze to that reddish state, that's around that's right. 650. Yeah. I guide myself on colour. Yeah. Um, if, if I torch the piece from the top down, I get a much more direct heat and it climbs up a little bit too fast. Yeah. That's why this type of setup is better, where you heat up from below through the mesh and it just warms up a little piece of mesh and it acts as, as a little bit of a oven, little oven effect or a kiln effect, if you may. Now, if you have a kiln, this is perfect for kiln. If anyone has a kiln and wants to give this technique a go, the type of kiln that you could use for enameling, for example, it would be perfect. Okay. So this is our last um, heating up of this piece of silver. It has been in the dull red for about two to three minutes now. Just monitoring the colors of the top. Got to be quite sensitive to the changes in, in color because that's what indicates temperature. And now we are ready. I'm just going to put it to one side and start cooling it down, getting it ready for quenching. I'm not going to turn my torch off because I am going to use it straight away. So, so Marco, what are typical pieces that you've done this process for? Uh, we are. Work I'm currently working on a nine karat gold bracelet with a student that is all reticulated and it's got a stone set in it. And then I am working on a pair of earrings that is also reticulated. So, yeah, <laughs> it, it's it can be used anyway. You can you can yeah. make rings. You could make pendants. Once your sterling silver is reticulated, such as this one here, this is stock metal. You can use it for anything. All right, getting my piece out of the pickle bath, giving it a little pat dry, and it is nice and clean and ready to go. So I'll put it in the center there. And I will take my clip out because what's going to happen next, Peter, mm -hmm. slightly up higher, is I am going to start the melting process. Stay there, phone. Stay there. There we go. Is that a good view? 
Perfect view. Thank you. Hopefully we can get whoop, without it falling. <laughs> uh oh. Hang on. Let's try this again. Is that better? Yep, we're getting there. Let's get it up again. My phone keeps fainting. How's that? No, it's going to faint again. Falls to one side. It's a little bit heavy. How's that? That's better. Perfect. So this step is done by hand, right? No flux. There's no need for flux here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up the metal to a little bit higher. Whoop. A little bit higher temperature this time over the 650 degrees I'm monitoring the temperature I'm looking at it it's starting to get really nice and pink and any time now the metal will begin a melting a controlled melting process slowly but surely there we go hopefully you guys can see this on camera it is beginning to melt and what I'm doing is I'm speeding up my movements so that I can melt and then let it cool and then come back to it, melt it. Look at that shine that's pulling through all the changes in color. Melt, melt, melt and pull, pull back and let it cool. Do it again. Get all the way up to hot sort of 700 closer to the 800 mark start heating up your metal move your flame around and let it cool and do it again remember it's in the cooling that the reticulation happens there we go and repeat this as many times as you need until you get a lovely reticulated surface. There we go, it's looking really good. I've got nice valleys, nice peaks. Heating it up and cooling it down. getting quite quite close to it allowing that metal to begin melting once you see that lovely shine pull out and let it cool down looks like a very satisfying process marker very slow you know and gentle mm. you have to be uh, take your time and just be very gentle with be very it'd be very therapeutic too i'm sure I love watching metal melt. If anyone else likes to watch metal melt, this is for you. A nice, small, strong flame is going to help you uh, exacerbate that uh, effect. I wish you guys could see up close how, how much the metal dances. It's so lovely when it does that. Mm. You can do a lot of reticulation or a little bit of reticulation. You have control over how much you are doing. That's the beauty of this technique. There you go. It's looking really, really good. Oops. Something else that needs to be always considered when trying to do these effects on your metal is that some of it might not be visible up until you finish your piece, up until you polish, up until you, for example, oxidize. That's when you're going to start seeing the real effect. All right, torch is off. <clears throat> and hopefully we are able to see the differences in the texture. 
I'm going to put this piece directly into the pickle so it quenches and I'm going to go ahead and lay the other one in the center. How's that? Can you see me in the phone camera? Yeah, we can, Marco. Okay. This piece that I'm going to do now is similar, but not the same. It's a lot smaller in size. So it could be a different effect. Heat it up. Remember, we are starting by 650. Once we reach the 650, it starts to go dull red. We want it to go a little bit higher in temperature and we start cooling it down. Heating it up, cooling it down. Change your flame to something a little bit sharper and more powerful. Hopefully you can hear me past the flame. Yeah, we've got you, okay. Heating it up and cooling it down. And that's where the magic happens. Heat it up, cool it down. Woo, I, melt, I melted one of the corners. So what's the worst thing you could do right now, Marco? It's easy to melt, very easy. Right, lovely reticulation there. Red hot, let it sit. You have to wait till it loses its redness. But have a look at how this looks. Freshly reticulated. Beautiful, a work of art. Into the pickle pot. Let it quench. Let it do its thing for a couple of minutes. I'm going to put the lid on. Oh, I can show you the one I put in here before. It's, it's not quite clean just yet, but it's getting there. There it is. It's almost like the surface of the moon, this one. It is. It's got a little crater <laughs> at the top. <laughs> if you could feel it with your finger, you you would see, you would feel it. It almost feels like sandpaper now. Okay. And as you as you can tell, the sides have not been affected. So we have treated the surface, but we haven't melted the surface that we began with. The size and shape of the piece is still the same. So I'm going to swap you to the other camera now, Peter. Sure, let's see how we go. Because I can show the different stages. Right. So let's recapitulate. <laughs> this is how we started. Nothing to see, just a plain, straight, very um, slick piece of sterling silver. And these are our reticulated pieces. We have manipulated the surface in a way that it almost looks satin and rugged. Have a look at this one here that hasn't quite pickled all the way yet, but look how beautiful the surface becomes. It's a lovely character, isn't it? Even when I have accidentally uh, melted that teeny tiny um, end there, that little corner, yeah. you could, uh, ideally for this technique, you start with a larger piece and then you end up trimming it down because Obviously, what we are trying to do is manipulate the surface to a level that it's almost melting it. So things can go wrong and quite wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's important not to use metal that is too thick, sorry, too thin. And also a larger piece than what you actually want it to end up with. Because the edges, as you very well can see, can melt. Yep. So, for example, if you made a, a band, a, a, a ring band with that lovely surface and then you buffed it and oxidized it, it would be a super beautiful texture. 
impossible to imitate. It just is a, is a reaction of the metal. It's not something that you can do in series. You have to treat every single piece in a different way, making every single one of your pieces more unique, uh, exclusive, and I guess more sought after. Mm. Well, as you say, it could never be repeated. Even you could couldn't never. repeat your own piece, could you? Nope. Mm. I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that is reticulation, everyone. Thank great, you. To, great to have you back on board today, Marco. Thank you so much for sharing about reticulation. Yes, thank you, everyone, for and attending our session. I'm sure you've uh, helped people. Um, we might just get you to take a photo of those couple of pieces and mm. we can pop them in the comments. Marco, we'll look forward to seeing you back again sometime real soon. Yes, thank you. I look forward to it as well. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Bye.